Welcome to Face the Facts, another virtual episode coming right to your screen. We have Phil Healy in the house and Tom Smith have also joined us here on our program. I am Nick Face. It's great to see you all here once again here on Face the Facts. I'm actually going to hide my face for a second because I have a message for Celtics land. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Look at your face. Look at your face. <laughs> did, you know, did you see what I, what I put up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't under, <laughs> but he's a god. Bye. So last you, night was the big draft of the NBA and I am, I, I, there's a lot of people that are happy with this Vanderbilt pick. Um, great. But the Celtics have not done one thing to prove to me that they are going to contend for a title. Why can't we get something of a star? I'll even take, uh, what's his face from Houston? I'll take J James Harden if it's a star. Like, we hold on to so many of these damn complimentary players. And that's Danny Ainge right there. When is the time going to be where this team is going to turn a corner, be a legit contender, and show the rest of the NBA and NBA fans that it's time for the Celtics to win another championship? May I remind you that the Celtics, the reason why I'm going so hard on them right now, have not won a championship since 2008. I sound like a spoiled white privilege kid right now, but that's how we are in Boston. We are title town. They have the longest drought right now. So you need to put every resource available that you can to trade up, to package players, to get star potential. And you don't have that right now. The other thing that we are waiting on, and it could happen while this show is going on, is apparently Gordon Hayward is out of here. But I'm not so I'm not so disappointed on that end. Because for $35 million a year, I think you can get another player who's not going to be injury prone to get the job done. So I'm not as uh, uh, whatever on the Hayward front. But whatever, the, whatever goes on, see, I, I think that people overvalue Danny Ainge. He's won one championship since he's been the GM in, since 2003. One. That is not good enough. So he deserves all the criticism right now at him. And unfortunately, green teamers don't give him that because they look at a Danny Ainge as a godlike figure. Not saying that's you, Phil, but enough is enough. Here. Were you talking about my God? Were you talking about I, my I, God? I was. I was. I'm gonna <laughs> all right. Down on this Favorably, I hope. Favorably. Yeah. All right, good. So that's my stance. I could be absolutely wrong. That's just my facts that I'm sharing. Could be different. Let's open this up to a lovely discussion with Phil and Tom. Tom gonna go first? Um, I, I guess, yeah, I guess Phil's giving me the, uh, he's giving me the A-OK -okay to go a first. Finger, yeah. So that means- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I heard about uh, they had that deal going with uh, going for the number two pick, um, and they could have gone to, they could have gone to the center out of that, which they need. Um, but yeah, they, I mean their their picks didn't result in any any form of player that they need right now, and um, it, it's looking like the the trade for James Harden probably won't happen either. No, no, I think Harden's going to Brooklyn. That's my. I think they're going to make a super team, Brooklyn, with uh, Kevin Durant and crybaby Kyrie and James Harden will all be together. And that just sounds like an absolute disaster waiting to happen. I can't wait to hear and see and get a hit. Oh, yeah. I mean, Brooklyn's um, going to be 10 times. Is, oh, Durant Brooklyn's going to be 10 ball. times worse. He gets the ball all the time. And Kyrie, the earth's not – earth's all flat, can't, can't shoot to save his life. And Harden bitching and moaning about, oh, well, they get all the ball time and – they're the stars, and I'm just the complimentary player. Like, that's what's going to happen. You put all those egos and everything together, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Yep. So my stance on this whole thing is if it wasn't Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum 
those are the only ones that I would put on the no trade kind of thing, unless you're getting something of value back in return from them. I would say it's open season on the rest of the roster. That would be Kemba Walker. That would be Jalen Brown. That would be uh, yeah, the, Gordon Hayward, all that stuff. I'd the, say, the rumor, bye, the you rumor failed, you didn't get the job done, see you later. The rumor trade, I, the only I ones was, I would keep, Phil. I was saying the only ones I would keep. Oh, I heard it. Marcus, Jason Tatum Marcus and uh, Smart. Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum are my keeps. Everybody else, if you I would something else, get it. I actually think it's Tatum and Brown for me. But, but Tom, you were saying something? I'm sorry. The, the rumored trade I saw for uh, Harden was Walker and Hayward. That's so nothing, though. You give that up in a heartbeat. Yeah. That's what I say. Uh, but I also, I just was reading a couple things about – how they were out of the Harden uh, trade. Well, yeah, no, he's he, – Harden's going to – Harden's going to New York. I mean, is that official or is that – Yeah, I think he's going to go to Brooklyn. They're going to make a super team. That's what I think yeah. is going to happen out there. But I think – I mean, so but I think the Celtics – The Celtics the bowed out – Yeah. feelings right there. Well, I think the Celtics bowed out on their own, too. They took themselves out of – I, I think they did, too. Which is insane. But, yeah, I would, what were you guys what expecting? You so, you would – Brown, oh. are your keeps – Brown and Tatum would have been my keeps, and everyone else would have been up for grabs. Uh, okay. But I don't know. I kind of I, – I love Smart, but I also think you might even get better if you – I mean, I love him to death, but, like, that game seven, I'll bring up again and again, that stat where he shot – he was the one who shot the ball the most. Or in the game six, I'm sorry, against Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I, I, I look at that, lot, but. I just think Brad Stevens, I think the play calling was pathetic on that. That's why I really don't think sure. the Celtics are going to win with Stevens as their coach. I'm not convinced. He hasn't proven Maybe. to me to be a big, big time coach in the NBA. <laughs> he's going to get the big wins with his team and concoct some sort of a master plan of attacking the rim or setting up plays effectively or putting the ball in the right player's freaking hands. But I don't mind passing the ball. I think that's not not necessarily the issue, but it's just. They like pass kind it of too rain. much. They yeah, pass or, it too much. Or you know, they pass it too much to the outside. Or they outside step back and, and they shoot, shoot these threes. miracle threes. Sometimes it works. I mean, we saw <laughs> Smart connect on a few different things. Yeah. He had a hot hand. But you can't continue to ride that. You can't continue to think every game you're going to get the same production out of that. You, you just – it's not going to happen with some of and these You need guys. some presence they're, in the they're middle. They're inconsistent. They're inconsistent. Yeah, uh, you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. Ah, that's right. Yeah, he's Einstein there. Ah, he, he's pretty uh, right incensed over last night's draft. He did not care for it, but yeah. Well, what was, was your what was your stance on it? I think the Vanderbilt pick was okay at fourteen. I think that that's okay. Yeah, I mean, what they got a bunch, they got some guards and forwards. It doesn't it doesn't excite me. I'm not excited about anything that happened there. It was and very it wasn't. Tough. It was very by the book. There's nobody there in my eyes that's going to get the Celtics over the hump to get them another championship. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the draft supposedly wasn't that deep. Um, but you know what? It's – we'll see. I just want them to get a big man and or another, uh, like, a decent uh, – I don't know. I, I They need a little bit more of a bench, and they need presence in the middle. I mean, I, I well, would say get – that on the show too i, I i'm we a did. firm believer in that phil with the bench and the depth there isn't any so well, I mean, they, they, they had some doesn't, but doesn't, uh, doesn't do they, anything for me it's just, ugh, you know and if yeah. they don't do anything with the team soon then tatum and brown are going to want out yeah they will it's a good point tom yeah no i mean brown is he's already locked in for like i think three or four more years but uh tatum yeah he's got one year left on the restricted and I'm nervous. I don't think he's going to stay. Not if not if this is the product that they're going to throw out there. I don't. Yeah, I eh, I'm kind of with you. More in the last five years of players that do not give a hill of beans about which team that they represent. There's no longer players anymore. I mean, look at Brady. There's no longer players anymore that are going to have the team's best interest at heart for that player. So if they've been there their whole career, that's a rarity now. You're not going to find it anymore because it's more of a business. Wherever the money points and wherever the best situation points to them, they're going to go. Yeah, 
I mean, that, that's just how, how it is. And not, it's not like it was back in the day where players would take a hometown discount or they really just love the city of Boston and they just want to be here and they want to play. Or they're just, you know, they're winning. Who knows? I mean, sometimes that cures all that ails you. It could. And I think it, it that depends. 2003 you know. or, de- excuse me, that 2000 into 2008. Two-year, two-year decade, decade run that we went through. You know, Boston was one of the premier cities to play in professional sports. Now, it's it's yeah, you know the Red Sox were miserable. The Patriots are all up and down with stuff. The Celtics probably still have the best chance out of everybody to win a championship, and the Bruins have broken our hearts way too much. So I mean, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. I yeah I just I just want uh, better presence in the in the middle so you can shift uh, you can shift uh, Daniel Tice to like a power forward and you get a little bigger and you're able to kind of push people around and it gives you versatility if you want to go small you can just uh, we haven't nice really talked center, about you know. it much today on our show but what's uh, what are your two guys stance on this whole Gordon Hayward saga oh he's got to go yeah he's got to go. He's, he's, he's not. He wants it. Do you he's, think this is coming more from Gordon Hayward saying he wants out? Or do you think the Celtics are saying, hey, we need to free up some money, so we're shipping you out of town? I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both. I mean, I think the fans want him out too. He get, he just gets, you know, he was good for the he was good for the team the first year he was here, but then he gets hurt, and it's like, well. Actually, and then he comes actually, back and gets uh, hurt that's, again. That's, that's incorrect, because if I, if I remember correctly – that the first, first game of in a Celtics uniform, he oh, got that's hurt. That's right, he got hurt. Yeah, but I know, I know what you mean. His first full well, season as a Celtic. Yeah, too, yeah. He was set up to do. He was set up to fail at yeah. that time when he got hurt from everything. Yeah, he's probably a great guy. Yeah, he's probably a great teammate. But at the end of the law, end of the day, if you're not staying healthy and staying on the court and you're not getting the job done, then sorry, dude. Like, you're not worth thirty-five mil. Peace. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if he's a good teammate. I mean, I know. I know that. Uh, he might be worse. I've heard inclination that. Oh, that he is, yeah. Well, I mean, he kind of agrees a little. I uh, but no, I mean, but I think it's more or less like, is, is does he fit the role? I mean, are there too many of those wing type guys? And I like him. You know, it's weird. I think it's a matter of it, Brown and Tatum, and he, uh, Brown, Tatum, Smart, Tice, and a big man in the middle. Or Kemba. <laughs> Add to that. I don't know. I smart would be good off the bench too. It's a weird combo. I mean, who's your starting five right now? If you take away uh, Hayward, and you have Kemba. Uh, you well, have, you're probably uh, sliding Tice into a starting role, which I don't love. I think he's more. I think he's better suited. I mean, he had a good year. I think he's better suited off the bench and all. But you probably also are putting no, Smart into a starting starting position too. And I think Smart is better served coming off the bench and being your spark. Yeah, who's your big guy though? I mean, uh, is Tice? You Kemba? could do Tice, Smart, uh, Kemba, uh, Brown, and Tatum are your starting five, and that's not I bad. I will tell but... you, you know, truth be told, here I will tell you that I am concerned on the Kemba Walker part. I think the Celtics oh, sure. His have knees. a player that Boom. is damaged goods right now, and they tried to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So guy. I'm concerned on that front. I think this has an Isaiah Thomas like. Uh, cannonball that's about to erupt here and it's not going to be pretty so they're going to have to figure out what's what they're going to do if Kemba isn't fully healthy but I I don't I don't see him being fully healthy I don't know so I think that we may actually see the Celtics not do as as great next year than they did this year which is a strong possibility and the east could be going on the downhill so yeah and we'll if Harden see. goes to Brooklyn, then that'll be a crazy blow. And uh, Brooklyn will already be that much better because you have Kyrie and whatever state Durant is in, it'll be better than, you know, what they had before. And also Philadelphia got a little better. Yeah, they did. And the Bucks got better. So, I mean. Everybody's getting better in the East, but the Celtics yeah. just sit there and just twiddle their thumbs, a lot like the Bruins, Tom. You know, the Bruins – as a matter of fact, a gentleman came into the store yesterday to transition out of basketball here and said that it does look like Chara is going to be back with the Bruins because he's skating at Restucia and he's um, 
you know, doing doing as best a job as he is getting ready for the season. So it looks like he'll be in a minimal kind of role here, but that doesn't do it for me either. The Bruins have actually done worse of an offseason than the Celtics have. Wait, That's is Char, is Char going to be in his? Um, I know that he just got in a new wheelchair for the. They're going to put him. They actually going to put him on the wheelchair plan for. I, right, I, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like he's probably going to be on like the third D pair with Kevin Miller or something like that. Right. Right. The, the... Well, I, I I don't I don't really have a lot of optimism. I'm sorry, folks. You know I know I I you know my passion. You know my care with these teams, but. The Celtics don't do it for me right now. The Bruins are just sitting there, twiddling their thumbs, not doing one damn thing. Oh, we won a championship in 2011. We're good. You know, we'll just sit back and collect and put our feet up. And, oh, we'll be good. Don't worry. We got, we got Bergeron, who's pushing almost 35, 36 if he's not there. We'll be fine. Don't worry about us. Pasta, no big deal. His wrist is fully healthy. We have all the confidence in the world. They're like reading from a freaking cue card. No, you know, pretty soon we'll be we'll be on here talking about New York instead of Boston. <laughs> yeah, you know, it just really feels like we're going down that path where we got so spoiled rotten these past 20 years where now we're going to go through some of these tough times. Theme of 2020, I think that these teams right now, it's – I actually have a little bit more spark – on the Red Sox out of all the teams. And that's because Cora's back. So I will say. Welcome to, welcome to being a Boston fan in the 90s, baby. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to my world. And it goes down like that. Well, right. no, the, the Celtics in the 90s were, the early 90s weren't too bad, like, 90, like up to maybe 93. Maybe that's even pushing it. But like I think 94, I think 92, 93 is when Mikhail was last year and he left, I think. And Chief left, but and then it was just kind of downhill from there. But uh, and the Red Sox weren't horrible, but they they uh, you know they had a, a decent stretch in ninety when Pedro or even a little before Pedro like ninety five ninety six yeah ninety seven ninety eight that was like the upswing. Uh, but right. still, there was a couple like nineties years of just crap. Two thousand was a real poor year. I remember that year. Yeah, no, it was kind of nice. but even before then, like ninety nine wasn't bad. Two thousand and three came, and then oh four we all got. You know, real excited yeah. to leave in the team. So. Well, even 1999. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 99 was Troy O'Leary and Pedro coming out. Yeah. You know, that 99 was, was a great year. We hosted the All-Star game. And- we did, yeah. No, it was a good one. And even, was it the Patriots? In the, like, they went to the Super Bowl in 96. And you had, um, but beyond before that, and even after that, they made the playoffs a couple times and just, and then Bob, Robert Kraft bought the team, and uh, the rest was history. Yeah. So on another another note, I want to do transition into football. The Patriots amazingly pulled off a miracle win. I'm going to call it a miracle because we want to thank Mother Nature. Mother Nature was very, yep. very friendly to the Patriots on very Sunday kind. Yep. Against the Ravens. Thank you, Mother Nature. If you can do that more often, that would be wonderful. But she is big time to thank for the Patriots' win against the uh, the Ravens, a pretty good football team. They didn't look so on Sunday night. Um, but maybe there is a little bit of hope. Why don't we? I'm not going to say uh, the Patriots going to turn that corner yet, but we're now four and five, folks. This Sunday they play the – is it the Texans? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the, the they Texans go down to Houston. Not a yeah. very good football team this year, so. Oh, apparently they their only wins are against Jacksonville Jaguars. Is it realistic for us to think that the Patriots will actually be 5-5 five and five by Sunday night? Uh, I mean, it's possible. Um, I mean, a bit of um, – well, there were a couple – I mean, there were a couple big games – on Sunday that, you know, helped the Patriots out too as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that uh, Buffalo lost from Sunday with a, with a Doug Flutie play. from Arizona, which was, Oh, like, that was nuts. Did you guys watch that? Like I saw the replay. I saw the replay. I, crazy. I saw it happening. You saw, you saw it happening. Nick? You guys, did I not say on the program last week, I said, Buffalo doesn't scare me. They don't look like a very good football team. No, so, I think, 
they're solid, but I'm with you. They don't scare me. I think they're <laughs> competent enough. They, they are they, very, uh, very beatable. And the Patriots should have beat them. No, they should have. They were at, at – so. yeah, no, like you said at the – not last show, but a couple shows ago, you both – both you and Tom said about it. Like, even if they just took a knee and they just went for overtime, like – I'm pretty confident they could have done something, but they also were – they were marching to the win – or for the win. Yeah, they were. They were there. They were. I don't know. And again, looking at the Patriots' record, there's three of those games that were – I think it was Seattle. I think it was – Denver. Uh, Chiefs and, and – well, Denver was kind of a bleh. But Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo, Chiefs, and Seattle. Those could be three potential wins right there. So maybe they aren't as bad as we think. I mean, like, but I mean that that Balt. I mean, Baltimore didn't really look good in that game, even no, before no, it started raining. No, no. Um, and I will say that I also believe that the Patriots can beat Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh hasn't played anybody, and I don't know how they're undefeated right now. That's not a very good football. Well, team. I mean, I, mean, I, I the guess only, their defense the only, is pretty good. The only team they really played that is that you know is worth even like playing against for them is Tennessee. Well, didn't they yeah. play – I mean, the Ravens are still, the Ravens are still pretty good. Um, no, but – no, no, I'm saying I'm okay. saying Pittsburgh. I'm okay. saying – Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, they played them too, though. They're yeah. in their division. Yeah. No, I know. And, and but, but, like uh, – Oh, Tennessee, you think – yeah, no, I hear you, though. Tennessee, Tennessee, really. almost, Tennessee, I mean, um, the Tennessee was keeping up with Pittsburgh for the most of that game that they played a couple of weeks ago. Um, but Pittsburgh always seems to have Baltimore's number, no matter who's on the team. Oh, that seems and, to be like their history, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, could the pa- could the Patriots have lost that game if it didn't rain? Yeah, but at the same time, that game was neck and neck, so who knows what would have happened if it didn't rain. What was oh, Cam Newton takeaways? throws – oh, good. I was going to say, what were some takeaways from the game that you, that you thought was pretty cool? I have one in particular that I was like, wow, I can't believe that happened. But what stood out to you the most in the game on Sunday, Sunday night? Uh, I was kind of half paying attention to it, so I couldn't really tell you. No, I, uh, I Winovich? The, the, Jacoby Jason Winovich. Myers, the Jacoby Myers touchdown pass. They faked it. Newton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, one, yeah. that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I forgot. You know, you forget sometimes that he's a quarterback. Yeah, eat, your, eat your heart out, Julian Edelman. So that was pretty cool. But these bag of tricks that McDaniels <laughs> likes to pull out from that from time and time. If that's what it's going to take to beat some of these teams, I don't know. I mean, I understand the weather and everything that was impacted from Sunday, but it seems like they have to go into these trickery things and pull a rabbit out of their hat to get some sort of a score down, touchdown-wise. I still will say I still am not super comfortable and confident with Cam Newton throwing the football. I still am not. I'm with I'm you there. Pleased. I'm very pleased with how Damian Harris is doing running the ball. I think Rex Burkhead's been a major spark, but I'm also concerned on that front because Burkhead has shown that he can get beaten up very quickly and he can be injury prone. So I think that they're not using, I think they're overusing him a little bit, but you know, you got to take what you can get if you need to pull out these wins and all, you know, that's well, what you do. well, I mean, you know, with Harris, it, it all depends on how Harris does. If Harris does well, then they don't have to use Burkhead as much. Now, I also heard a report that up this upcoming Sunday is Sonny Michelle is going to be coming off of uh, injury reserve. Yep. So, yep. I don't know what you guys think on it, but I'm not giving That's him – That's going to be interesting. I'm not giving him it back. No, I it's, wouldn't, it's, it's Damien to lose, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't he, give him – lights a candle under, under Sonny Michelle, you know, and this gets him going. But I, for what, under zero circumstances, say, oh, well, Sonny's back. Oh, yeah, here's the ball. You know, Damien, you're, you're not going to play, and you're going to no, be- I would, I would give No, I would give Harris more carries, for, definitely. But, I, but, you know, you want, we want to give – but that means, that means we can use Burkhead more for what we want to use him for, which is goal line I plays. I think so. The other one I want to get moving a little bit more, too, is James White. I think we're seeing how – valued he was under the Brady system and I don't think he's been super effective with Newton as his quarterback well he had that big play on Sunday at the start of the game he did have the big play but we also got to remember too that James White is also this is a 
very, very tough year for him. You know, he just lost his dad and his mom went through um, a lot of uh, trouble with her health, with um, everything. So, you know, he's playing on a heavy heart right there. So I, I, it's going to be tough to get the, probably the most out of him because, you know, his head's probably in a million different places. So I understand, I understand what he's going through there. Yep. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so I'm going to be an optimist here. I'm going to think that the, I'm going to say that the Patriots will get the victory on Sunday re and improve to five and five. And I think it's going to propel this team into a different kind of confidence and a different kind of structure. I think the Patriots actually do have a chance at getting into the playoffs after all. I want to see what they can do against Buffalo again and play them. They got Miami to play again. They got, I think, another game with the Jets. So, yep. I mean, if they can get a rhythm going and get some confidence and some uh, good, good uh, team building and work on some good plays, I think that – I think that it could be okay at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. Um, the other, the other uh, team I want to talk about was the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers came uh, kind of back to earth. They got a, a victory, a big victory, as a matter of fact, against Huge. Carolina this past Sunday. I think Brady had three or four touchdown passes. I know he connected with Gronk on one of them again, old faithful. So, I think that what we saw against the Saints, I just think the Saints have their number for whatever reason it is. I still think that the Bucs will have plenty of uh, uh, plenty of playoff hopes for people that think that they might, you know, be a, a, a good contender there for a, um, um, a Lombardi Trophy. So well, we'll for them. For them, I think it all depends on how the first half goes because it seemed it seemed like most of their games it's like neck and neck in the first half, and then once they get in the second half, they either explode or they just absolutely crap the bed. Right, right. No, I would I would totally agree on that. Um, anything else that we wanted to add in here on the sports side of things? So I want to close out our show with um, something that we do every year right before Thanksgiving. I I got nothing. And speaking of turkeys, Phil has rejoined us there, so welcome back. <laughs> oh, gobble, gobble, sir. Gobble, gobble. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to add in for our show before we finish off, and we do this every year on for, uh, before our Thanksgiving time comes, is just something that you're thankful for. So I'll let you go first. Uh, well, I'm thankful for this guy right behind me. 100%. Uh, I am uh, thankful for being able in this weird time to, <laughs> to fire Danny Ainge. Wait a minute. No, I didn't mean to read that. Uh, I actually said fry Danny Ainge. You could put him yeah. under the fire for your turkey and stuff him. Oh, sure. Uh, which would be very, I'm sure, it would not feel good at all. But it might taste great. But, uh, no, I'm thankful for hanging out with you guys, doing the show, uh, just being able to operate uh, as Norcam as much as we can. And the fact that, you know, people are, tr there a good amount of people are trying to get, you know, to do what they can, you know what I mean? To connect with each other. And I just hope people uh, celebrate safely, do their own thing. If they're, you know, if they're in their bubble, do that. And also call people who you, you can't see and, you know, like a grandparent or like a, a great uncle or people or your elder neighbor, people who, you know, you don't know if they have anyone. So try to, uh, you know, be mindful of other people who don't have people with them this year. Thomas. Uh, well, I'm thankful for uh, being able to still do some stuff that, you know, I enjoy doing. Um, and, and also that we're still able to watch sports and that, you know, athletes are still trying to uh, give us an entertainment to work with during these, uh, during these trying times. Yeah. I would say the number one thing for me that I'm thankful for is my support system, whether that's my family, my friends. It's been that one of those years where you've needed as much support for me and in, in all everything I do as possible. Uh, it still pretty much blows my mind how horrible this year has been. But what's nice about how horrible it's been is it's starting to go a different direction, at least in my life, with a new business, a store, a place that I can remember my mother from, and pe friends and family can come in and enjoy. That gives me a sense of 
number one, pride, excitement, drive, passion that I can share with people that have really taken it hard this year, especially, and in, you know, enjoy something out of life. You have to take it one day at a time. And I can't say that enough. You have no idea what the next day, the next year, the next month, the next second, all that stuff is going to lead to. So take every moment that you get and make the most of it and make sure with your family and friends that you appreciate them, that you spend time with them, that you talk with them because the life's a gift and it can be taken like that. So just treat those and that are super close to you and everything with, with a lot of pride and a lot of respect and cherish every second that you can have with them. So that's what I'm thankful for. Oh, and I got one more thing too. I'm thankful that Alex Carr is back. There you go. For sports, I would say that's a good thing I'm thankful for. Um, that, that's a good one. I would probably repeat that. I don't like to, I don't want to be different on that. That's a good one. That, yeah, I think that's that's a nice one. the sports thing around for me. Cora coming back is a good thing for the Red Sox. And I will like to say I'm glad that Danny Ainge is part of your support system. And I think it's, <laughs> it's important. It's important to have him there. He doesn't make a lot of good decisions, but he's there. I know. Still a good guy. Still, still. I again. I'm not trying to. Swap. <laughs> no, I know. Just, I think all Celtics guy. fans are feeling I, it. I will say that I expect more out of me as a fan. Oh, I'm I'm with you 100, percent man, and I'm a defender of him. But I think, like, and not he's unrealistically, a he's a very good executive. I'm not going to tell you he's not, but he, he, needs to, he needs to understand that fans are growing tired of the same old song and dance. Yeah, take a risk, man. That's all. That's all. Yep. Sometimes the best risks that are, are, are the best ones worth taking. So take it. Take a chance. Take a risk. That's going to do it here. We will see you all again real soon, probably most likely after our Thanksgiving break. So from our family to yours, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we will see you all real soon. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.